Oh, Jesus. Well, my Trailblazer SS is finished. The Trailblazer SS Ferrari Flip project is complete. There it is right there. A few weeks it took me to get it from this to this. And now it's up for sale. This is the process I took to get this Trailblazer SS that I paid $2,000 for up to where it's at right now. We're gonna, I'm going to show you everything we did to this car and how we did it. So let's get started. So hey there, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Welcome to my Flying Wheels YouTube channel. If, if you haven't been following yet, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what I'm at right now. Well, I started with just $400 when I started my business, and I have what I have now based off that original $400 and, and continuously reinvesting it in myself and my business. Well, I don't need a new business, so I'm showing you how I started my business by building myself up to a Ferrari with just my $400 initial investment. So I started with $400, I bought a car, I cleaned, I fixed, and I sold that car for a profit. And then I moved on, and then I moved on, and then I moved on. I lost a few times, and now I'm up to the Chevy Trailblazer. Well, it's not just any Chevy Trailblazer. This is a Chevy Trailblazer SS. And I'm going to tell you the whole story about this car and how we got it looking the way it looks now because this is not how we purchased it. So here's the story. Follow along. I'm going to give you all my tips, all my tricks, show you everything I did to get it here. And also, we're going to see if we can make some money on this. Right so there is a 2006 Chevy Trailblazer SS. That is a 6 liter V8, yes, the same engine that is in a 2006 Chevy Corvette. It's an all-wheel drive absolute monster with a near bulletproof engine. And I was at the auction the other day and I saw it running through from afar. It's not something that I saw in the parking lot when I was looking through all the cars. A lot of times I get to the auction early and I start looking through the auction to see what's here. I did not see that one. So while I was bidding on some cars, I saw that one from afar, just like I saw the MG, if you saw my MG video the other day. I don't mind gambling on $2,000 cars because sometimes they pay out really, really well. Well, that one I saw from afar and it was ugly. I knew it was ugly, but I said to myself, that bumper looks like an SS bumper. Let's go check it out. Turns out it's a Trailblazer SS, not just a regular Chevy Trailblazer. These things are getting harder and harder to find. Well, this is a reconstructed title, which means it was probably in a prior collision or a flood. We have no idea yet. I haven't pulled the Carfax, so I really don't know anything about it. I'm gonna try to rebuild this thing, bring it back to life, make it the monster that it should be, and then at the end, we're gonna try to resell it for a profit. Well, we're still at the auction here, and you can see that obviously all the wheels have been replaced, which is sad because the wheels that go on this thing are actually really, really nice 20-inch six-spoke wheels. It's pretty dirty. It smells like an animal in here. It's rough. And sadly, it has cloth seats, not the leather seats that are optional in this thing. It does have tow package. And even if you go onto the inside, it does have the Trailblazer SS badging on the steering wheel and the seats, but these are just regular standard Trailblazer seats. This is a standard Trailblazer interior, which is kind of a bummer. There's no frills about it. There's nothing that glorifies and makes this feel like it's as special as it really is. Now you'll see right here it says Trailblazer SS. That's usually the optional 4x4 buttons on the Trailblazers. But because these are all-wheel drive, you don't get the optional four-wheel drive with low and high. Now you all know the game. Let's see if it starts. That's a good sign. It starts. It runs. What lights are on the dash? We have a brake light and a traction light. Now the big question is, does it move? Well, it ran through the lane, so obviously it moves a little bit. But every one of these cheap cars that I don't get to look at before buying is a gamble. Because like Forrest Gump says, you never know what you're going to get. And I don't know. But I think I paid $1,900 for this car. The engine alone is worth $1,900. So there's really no gamble. And a lot of times I'll say it's a calculated risk. Because when the engine's worth $1,900, I'm really not gambling on anything. I can take that out and put it in my race car and break even. But no matter what, I'm going to get my money back on this car. But we're not in it to break even. We're in it to make a profit. So let's get this thing back to my shop and see what we can do to it. You're Craig from Flying Wheels, right? I am, yeah. I watch your videos all the time. <laughs> Thanks a lot. See you later. See ya. Appreciate it. Now that I'm driving this thing, I do notice something kind of neat. This isn't just a standard Trailblazer steering wheel or even just an SS steering wheel like the Silverados. This is a Grant steering wheel. 
and you can see it's actually kind of like a race fit. It's ergonomically fit to my hands. Trailblazer SS, I have a ton of side projects going on. I'm going to let you take full control. You make all the decisions, you do the job, I'll purchase the parts, you do the install, the recon, and then we'll see how we do at the end. Fair enough? Fair. This is your project. We have some good things in, in the works. Cloth SS, or should we have gone leather? We can find leather seats or just stick with cloth. I don't know. Trailblazer update, three days later... We got our 20 inch wheels. We have our Trailblazer SS leather suede seats all came in that pallet right there. So this is gonna look amazing on this Trailblazer, which is already coming out pretty amazing. Good news, old wheels are off, new wheels are on. We're doing brake pads and rotors all around, blower motor resistor, stuff it needs for safety inspection. But we have some really bad news. I figured out why this thing has a reconstructed title. Check this out. The undercarriage is pretty solid. I mean, you have like normal surface rust, but this doesn't even look like New England rust. It's like dirt and stuff. Well, yeah, there's rust, obviously. But the big thing is right here. That would be the frame. And that's not a rotted frame. That's completely solid. It looks like it hit something and gouged the frame wide open or something and it's never been repaired. That's a weird, weird spot to have a hole in the frame. So on top of wheels, tires, seats, brakes, rotors, we now have to do frame repair too. It's Friday and it's after five. We close in about 53 minutes. These guys are hard at work trying to get things done. Tomorrow's Saturday. There's German. German, why do we need to get all this done? Since we're already in black, we're gonna paint the quarter and the spoiler on that GTO. And we still have to bring in the expedition so we can do the tailgate as well. Bumpers off. Wheels looking fly. German on the bumper. Everything's ready. Ready for paint. So it's 8 a.m. Saturday morning, the next morning. I guess the guys worked late last night. I didn't even know they were staying late. I didn't ask them to stay late, but it shows how great they all are. They stepped it up and I think they got the job done for me. So I'm gonna head over to the shop before I go somewhere else to go look at progress. Here's the trailblazer, bumpers off, covered in dust again, bumpers off. Here's the, oh, there was a good dent right there. Oh, guys. We have bumpers here that came out pretty good. Wow, those bumpers came out nice. Didn't fix that dent right there, though. Spoiler for the GTO came out pretty nice too. Front bumper here, they look like they all need to be wet sanded, but they're presentable. GTO, we have some body work that we did right here. There's a big dent right there. And this hood is extremely dull, so I'm curious to see how that buffs out. And then here again, we have our Mustang, so we can get to work on this thing again now that all of these projects are finished. Here's what I'm curious about. German and I go back and forth all the time. When touching up an area with paint, you'll see German likes to paint an entire half of a quarter panel instead of painting the whole thing. And he says he can wet sand and blend that. I say it's a bad idea. This isn't how you do it. I don't think this is going to blend out. Look at half of this door is painted for a dent that was this big. 
and this big. So I feel like now it looks like an entire car was half painted because of too small dents. But German swears that he can wet sand and buff it out and blend it. We'll, we'll see. I don't like it, but he's going to have to prove me wrong. So I doubted you. I came in this morning and I looked at your paint job and I said, he always does this and he says he can wet sand and buff it out. You tell me, was I right or were you right? Looks like somebody smudged their palm right up against the spoiler yeah. though. Look, fingers still. Still soft. This is what we get for rushing jobs. Did the wet sand and buff come out? I'm not even on. I'm just taking the cloud out. I didn't, right. I'm not even, because you see? Yeah, good if idea. I put the, my buffer on it, I'm going to just. Have you done that side, that door yet or no? I haven't buffed it, no. Oh, okay. So this is, this looks pretty good. That one hasn't been done yet. Yeah. Okay. You can see the cloud around. Yeah. German summoned me into the garage because they think he wanted to show me something. This, I'm assuming it's this dull, foggy, hazy roof. And that's what it's coming out like. Progress on the GTO. Original side, clean side. I knew this thing was gonna come out amazing. Check this out. Windows and all. Wow, that paint's coming right back. Even the SS emblem is more noticeable now. So we detailed the whole thing and replaced the seats. Look at how nice the seats look now. Huge difference, huge difference. One problem though, I bought these seats in like North Dakota, and they came out of a crashed TBSS, Trailblazer SS. Watch this. The seat belts are locked. There's a CO2 cartridge inside seat belts. When the airbags deploy, the seat belts lock and keep you from moving forward. And it happened on both sides. So now, luckily, I have the other Trailblazer seats. And we have to remove the seat belts out of those seats to put them in these seats. But these seats have already been installed and they are not easy. Here's the old seats. Look at how Germans basically, you're reupholstering this thing. That's how much work it is. So we're gonna have to do that to the other seats too. And they're already installed in the truck. That would be my fault. Cause I forgot when I ordered them, he actually told me they froze or locked or whatever. And I completely forgot until they were already installed. So it's probably quicker to remove the seats again. I don't know. Also, we're finally working on this. I even replaced these. These are test fitted. Here's a dirty wheel. German doing his magic on this wheel. And here's how it's coming out. Yeah, huge difference. I think I'm glad we went with black German. We had the option of going with a black set in like North Dakota or Nebraska or something and a polished set somewhere else, but the tires weren't as good. I think the black was a good choice. So German does upholstery now. How much work was this? It's just harder because the leather, it's harder to... Yeah. The cloth flexes really easy. The leather is a little harder. Looks good though. Check this out, panel by panel, we're three days in, motivated and moving on the Mustang. Everything's coming out swimmingly. Look at it. the trunk's ready, the quarter's finished, the doors are off, the hood's off. First time in years, literally years, we're making progress on this thing. And the reason I'm doing it, look at how clean the undercarriage is. Look at how nice that is finally coming along. Now the question is, what color? Red, black stripes, gunmetal, black stripes, blue, black stripes, he wants orange. I don't know, what color should we go with? Oh, black, black. This truck is black, black, as you just said, German. But this is almost, I don't know. What was it just for, why did we paint this much? How big was the spot? Was it just um, this? Yeah, we had scratches from like whatever has side swipes here. We had scratches up here. Mm -hmm. That's up. 
and, and, uh, and the body work was here, and remember we did the body work. We did some body work here. down here too. Yeah. Well, the body work looks great. Mm -hmm. hmm. All right, this one I'm curious to see how it comes out. Two hours later. German. Uh, can you come here for a second? I gotta give credit where credit is due. Alright. I had a hundred percent doubt in you in this paint job. I don't see a blend. I don't see a line. I don't see anything. This how long how much time did you spend on this? Because I still have like the other side. Because we had a lot of overspray from everything. Ah right. So I still have like complete panels on the side. I just don't see even see it looks you really did a great job on this. So I, I was telling Sean about that yesterday. It's like when the like when the paint matches is the whole difference. You can fade it. Right. So can you explain to me what you did to blend this so well? Because it looked horrendous. Yeah, so it was just I had to just wet sand the whole panel. Door, quarter. Yeah, and then do a three step. Like heavy grid compound, then I went mid grade, then I went on glaze, and then hand wax. So you blended it right to this line, mm -hmm. because what you said was the line the line deceives the eye, which it looks amazing. All right, it it's really looks amazing. <laughs> So the tint is peeling off here and I tried to wet sand and then respray it with some lens tint and it was just getting lighter and darker. So now German's doing 220. 220 to get it all off and then we're gonna wet sand and muff it. So today we are at the frame shop. Mass Chassis does a great job. Frame's getting repaired and this thing looks damn good. Wow, you have some cool projects here. He says he should have it done by tomorrow, and I think it's sold already. Oh, nice. So that's a good thing. So the Trailblazer is finished. It took us about two weeks after everything showed up and bouncing around between everything else. Now this is one of my Ferrari flips, brake pads, rotors all around. I also had to do some brake lines, and we did a master cylinder. So I'm into it for close to four thousand dollars, actually. And to be honest with you, it kind of just feels like a beefy Trailblazer. I mean, there's nothing that amazing. About Oh Jesus! Never mind, I take that back. I think all four wheels just spun. That was insane. So I, wow. All right, so that's the first time I've hit the gas in this thing. This is the first time I've even driven this thing because we took it back to our shop on a trailer and it's been in the garage ever since. <laughs> oh my God, it's so fun. This truck is awesome, I get it now. And these things are worth a ton of money. I found that out after I purchased it. So let's go to a parking lot. I'm gonna take some videos of it, take some photos of it, and show you what it really came out like. To be honest with you, it kinda just, after I do one last pedal to the floor, of course. <laughs> oh my God, this thing is a race car. That was so much fun, I was not expecting it. This thing is amazing. Well, here we go, and keep in mind, we still need a final detail on it, but it's pretty much finished. This is basically what the end result's gonna be. We painted the front bumper, we bought that middle lower grill. We also bought both of those chrome, chrome billet, whatever you call those, inserts right there. We wet sanded and polished the entire truck. One of my favorite parts is these wheels right here. So these are the factory 20 inch powder coated black. We did brand new pads and rotors. We should have done the calipers red. We also did the bow tie in red and then I did like a rhino liner across the hood to kind of texture it because there were some dings and dents that we had to correct here. And rather than painting the entire hood, we just did that. And if I didn't tell you, you would have never known. So don't complain in the comments section. We buffed the entire truck. So this is what the paint, uh oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, what's this? That rear lower bumper was really, really expensive. That was like a $250 piece right there and we we're already losing it, but it just clips in with cheap clips. So we'll have to reattach that. This 
right here I couldn't do any better with because the SS badging actually pulled off some of the paint, so that's about as good as that's gonna look. Those wheels, though, made the truck. Let me lighten this video up. That's how good they look. Oh yeah, awesome. And then you can see, actually, with the brighter light, how nice this thing came out. Now, we painted the rear bumper as well. We did some repair work down here, and look at how perfect that blend is. You can't even tell. So I gotta give German credit where credit is due because there is a blend there that you cannot see. Last but not least, this interior. We redid the seats. So I purchased the SS interior seats. We cleaned everything up. It still has the Grant steering wheel, obviously. I am really, really pleased with how this truck came out. So now it's gonna go up for sale. We're gonna list it on our website, and I'm also gonna run it through the auction to just see what we get for a quick turnover. After everything we've done, sometimes you get more at auction than you even do retail, and I don't have to deal with the headaches of the consumer. So we'll see how it does at auction. If it doesn't sell at auction, we'll retail it and get all the money for it. But now it's gonna go back to the shop and get that final detail. You can see that right, let me see if I can do this right. You can see that tire right there has a little bit of low tire pressure, so we'll fix that, we'll fix the rear bumper, and then do a final detail, and it goes up for sale. This was kind of a long project, but this is part of the Ferrari flip, so I'm into it for about four grand, for a Trailblazer SS, a 400 horsepower car for four grand. And if you think about it, I started with just $400. So that car's basically free. I paid two, I sold the Cadillac SRX for two, so that's the $4,000 that I had. That's what I have into that truck. So whatever I sell that truck for now is profit and I can move on to my next Ferrari flip. So I have $4,000 into that thing total. I'm $4,000 into my $400 Ferrari flip. So I'm what, 1,000% profit so far in just three months. I have a Trailblazer SS that I own and I should be able to get seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000. I really don't know, but whatever I get for it, moves on to the next car in the Ferrari flip. So if this video was at all helpful, enjoyable, entertaining, educational, make sure to tell me in the comments what I did right, what I did wrong, what you didn't like, what you do like. Do me a favor, give me a thumbs up because it helps boost the algorithm, which is a favor for me, it helps boost my channel, and then I can make better videos for you guys. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what's the deal? Subscribe down below, I appreciate it. Always, all the support, thank you everybody. I'll see you in the next Ferrari flip. Adios.